So our first uh, guest uh, for the opening address, Professor von Schorlimer, State Minister for Higher Education, Research and Arts. Uh, and uh, she taught at the Universities of Geneva, Lausanne and Basel and held the Chair in International Law, EU Law and International Relations at TU Dresden. In 2009, she attracted the world's first UNESCO professorship in international relations to the TU Dresden. Professor von Schalden. Under Secretary General, dear Professor Osterwalder, Excellencies, especially Minister Pelembe from Mozambique, Magnificence, dear Professor Miller Steinhagen, dear UNU Vice Rectors and Directors, dear Professor Adakanian, dear Mr. Metzger, Presidents, Directors and Deans, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to me to welcome you here to Winterly Dresden today on the occasion of inaugurating, together with you, this scientific institute, the United Nations University Institute for Integrated Management of Material Fluxes and of Resources, which is so important for the Free State of Saxony. As of today, the Free State of Saxony is flying the flag of the UN, once again acknowledging its cosmopolitanism spirit. A member of the UN family made its home here, and it is indeed a great joy for us. For a long time, we have worked together intensively between the free states, the federal government level, represented by the Ministry of Education and Research, and with the United Nations University to see this day <coughs> materializing. And it has come. Today, Dresden sees the birth UNU FLORES, which is the sounding acronym, as you all know. And very soon, we also hope to see the birth of a twin institute of UNU FLORES in Mozambique, which we would appreciate very much too. Ladies and gentlemen, let me briefly take you on a virtual journey of 14,118 kilometers length. Please imagine, though, how huge how seemingly insurmountable this distance is. Well, my ministry is exactly 14,118 kilometers away from your Ministry of Science, <laughs> Excellency, your Ministry of Science in Maputo, Mozambique. It takes a flight time of 16 hours to get from one place to the other, but thanks to Google Maps, it just takes a few touches on our smartphones and tablet computers to get a virtual idea of remote places. And via Skype, for example, despite the huge distance, we can even exchange in real time by looking each other in the eye. That brings 14,118 kilometers down to an arm's length that is the distance between the screen of my tablet and me. And this simple example demonstrates that even though we are faced with quite complex tasks on the global level, we are at the same time well on our way to find ways and means, means and methods to meet those challenges. In the future, we will only be able to control the global nature and complexity of things together. And we are well aware of that. None of the issues that this world is facing can and should be solved only with respect to its respective regional context. No government, no scientific elite alone would be able to master that task. What needs to happen is that we cluster and interconnect our intellectual resources on a global plane. I hope that with UNU Flores, we will be able to take direct steps towards the goal of finding answers to basic questions of our existence, to the goal of training experts that are able to implement concrete solutions and feasible processes for the real life out there, and that we will be on the right way soon, for example, by quickly setting up 
meaningful master programs and graduate courses. Since our last <coughs> workshop in the year 2010, which I remember very well, a number of things have been achieved in the scientific community in the Free State of Saxony. Some months ago, the Technische University Dresden won an award as a University of Excellence in a complex and ambitious national competition, which was a big step towards playing its role amongst the best university in the world. For the Free State of Saxony, this success was significant. It was also a reward for the political priorities we had set by focusing on education and the sciences. Maybe the decisive factor that contributed to this success was the so-called Dresden concept, which is a network with independent institutions of research and culture, as well as the synergetic cooperation of various departments within the university, which is aimed at finding interdisciplinary solutions to complex and multifaceted problems and challenges. It goes perfectly well together with the Free State's University Development Plan 2020, by which we have set the course of action for research, training, science and technology transfer at our institutes of higher education for the years to come. In the future, we shall continue to encourage networking also between the various regional players in the scientific world. Universities and colleges are to further develop the dialogue between science and society via institutionalized scientific forums focusing on their central themes which position them uniquely in a global competitive community. This approach has already yielded its first fruits. For UNU Flores, this means that it will also find partners, in addition to TU Dresden, partners that will be very interested of cooperating with it. The way has already been prepared for some of those partnerships. To name but a few, there are the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research, UFZ in Leipzig, the newly found Helmholtz Institute for Resource Technology in Freiberg, the Institute of Ecological Urban and Regional Development in Dresden, and the brand new German Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research in Leipzig. In other words, the academic landscape of Saxony, with its pronounced technical profile, is well prepared for meaningful contributions on questions about the future, such as how do we plan on handling natural resources in the future? How can we move away from the current way of doing things, for example, by simply using up energy, material resources, natural resources, our health? How will we handle the responsibility we have when it comes to material resources or people in other parts of the world, and of course, also with regard to future generations? Ladies and gentlemen, time and time again, the year 2012 has seen critical situations with regard to global climate. We, the so-called industrialized nations, have seen that we are subject to natural disasters too. Definitely, the issue does not just apply to the southern hemisphere. Our chancellor and our federal minister for environment have used several occasions this year to make clear statements on Rio plus 20 and about the energy transition in Germany. Therefore, I believe I'm not only speaking for the Free State of Saxony, but also for the federal government of Germany by stating that it is in our very own interest to better understand the global scientific discussions about the consequences of future climate changes, of uncontrolled land use, and of demographics and also to develop an overall approach to solve these problems together with other nations. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, I think it's time. In politics, we have to go beyond simply defining a problem 
analyzing it, issuing dire warnings. Instead, we have to ask the question, what do we need to do? What are we able to do? How can we get the emerging nations not to simply imitate their former colonial powers by bringing in their harvests at the expenses of nations that are even poorer, but instead embrace aspects of sustainability right from the start? The oath of sustainability comes into question here. The answer encompasses economic, ecological and social aspects and hence it has a strong political dimension. Science forms the basis for solving all related concrete questions. This is where the political and the scientific tasks meet. And this is where I believe is the most important interface for UNU Flores and where I see the core purpose of this UNU Institute. The title UNU Flores represents the program, ladies and gentlemen. The Flores part in it reminds me of the Latin verb flowers. And the work of the Institute shall make them bloom. At the heart of its purpose is the research of an integrated management of water, soil and waste in cycles that mutually influence one another. And these cycles must be maintained and developed in a stable fashion. The basic thought of it was expressed in the forestry ordinances as early as in the 16th century due to an ever greater shortage of wood. At that time occurred the shortage of wood in Central Europe but also in Japan independently of each other. In his book about forest management, Hans Karl von Karlowitz, a mining administrator in Saxony, introduced the term sustainability already in 1713. If we raise the question of sustainable development and combine it with consequences of technical solutions, the ethical dimension turns out to be an additional point we need to focus on. University and research institutes have to meet this challenge. Scientists, given their excellent knowledge, do have, I think, a greater responsibility. And this responsibility does not just encompass their direct surroundings, their own research questions and own research projects. Instead, we do expect and we must even demand from excellent scientists to contribute to the best of their knowledge to an adequate solution for global challenges that affect the respective fields of research, be it economics, engineering, natural or social sciences. And this also means my ladies and gentlemen, that one question has to be asked over and over again. How do my research results contribute to sustainable development, both in the Free State of Saxony, in Germany, and in other parts of the world today and in the future? And this is something I would really like to highlight, not only since today, it's the 10th December, the International Day of Human Rights. To conclude, searching for such global answers and solutions, putting research in an international context is one of our central tasks of the scientific quest for knowledge, if we want to preserve creation and build our future. Ladies and gentlemen, we owe the fact that we have been able to further develop the capabilities to do so with you and you, Flores, to all those who, over the past few years, have greatly contributed to the founding of this institute. Let me express my thanks to them. The year 2013 is just around the corner. 2013 will see the 300th anniversary of the coining of the term of sustainability here in Saxony. From the UN perspective, it will also be the International Year of Water Cooperation. I already have touched on some of the aspects of the correlations between the different spheres. And summing up, I think we just can say Uniflores has come at the right moment. Thank you very much for your attention.